you know, high stress job that maybe has some benefits, but you're definitely sacrificing for it. And you're looking and saying, gosh, I would, I would love, I'd love to be done at this high stress job at this time, even if that meant I had to take a lower paying job. We help people with that all the time. Your CFP can give you the answers as to how to do that. What are those planning implications? I'm gonna help you right now, coming up. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, tell me if this scenario uh, sounds familiar. All right, so my job is very stressful. Uh, it's very demanding. I uh, feel like I'm always connected to, I can never really leave work, it's connected. I, I'm, do, I'm, I'm in customer service or I'm in sales or I'm in, I'm in something. It's very high demand, high stress, and I get paid well, but gosh, I would love, I would love say at 55 or, or at some point to be done with this job and transition to something that's less stressful and I know it would come for less pay. Can I do it? Can I do that? I, and we get this question a lot and it feels like a lot more recently. I know the pandemic and these changes and mandates and uh, demands and all this, uh, it, many jobs have just gotten a lot harder, okay? And so you might have seen your investment portfolio grow, you might have been able to save a lot or whatever, and you might now be feeling this as well, saying, ah, I, I, would, I would love to transition to something less stressful, and I'd be willing to give up some of the income in order to, to have that more balanced life. Well, how do you plan for that financially, specifically with retirement? Now, to me, there's, well, there's always, there's five factors to your retirement plan, your, your retirement readiness. There's five factors, I'm gonna hit those real quick, but what are the specific implications that can help you determine if and when and how you could transition into that semi-retirement state, even though you're working full-time, but drop that high stress job, that high stress, high pay job, going to one that's less stressful, you're more passionate about, even if it comes with less income. So the five factors, whether that's part of your plan or, or whatever else to determine whether you're on track for retirement, you've got to look at how all five of these factors uh, connect together and interrelate, okay? It's, it's what age do you want to be done and also life expectancy. So age, second is spending. And so not only lifestyle, but also health insurance and inflation and taxes and, va and all that sort of stuff, okay? So what's your lifestyle, what's your spending? Third is income sources. So do you have a pension? Will you have part-time income? Do you have real estate income? What's your strategy with Social Security? How do you optimize it? So that's the third factor. Fourth is investments. How much are you saving? How much have you saved? How much have you already built up for retirement? Um, and then fifth is what sort of risk do you wanna take with those investments? How comfortable are you taking high risk or low risk or no risk, something like that with your investments? Those decisions, those decisions all interrelate, they are all connected when it comes to determining whether you're on track to retire or what you'd need to do to get on track. So let's take a look at those five factors though, but through this lens of, well, I'm in this high stress, high pay job and I'm ready, I would love to transition. I'm gonna call it semi-retirement, but maybe you're still working part-time or full-time, but it's to a less stress, less pay job. What, what do you need to explore? I mean, the first is, is within that spending number and that's health insurance. Can you transition from that high stress, high pay job into one that's less stressful, but that still offers health insurance? You've gotta evaluate that first, because if that answer is no, no, I'm gonna be transitioning into this adjunct professor role, I will not be able to get health insurance. You've gotta update that in your financial plan because all of a sudden you're spending, your spending, your expenses are going to go up. That second factor of lifestyle is gonna go up it likely, likely before 65. If you're, if you're saying I can hold on to this high stress job only for a certain matter of time and then I gotta transition to something else, I just have to assume that's, that transition's gonna happen before you're eligible for Medicare. And therefore, figuring out if that low stress job can offer health insurance, that's huge. As I work with clients, as we've worked with clients throughout the years where they're, they're, that this is part of their goal, it's, well, I don't, know, I, I don't know how much you need to make, but it definitely needs to offer health insurance so that's not coming out of pocket. So that's the first variable that we're talking about, but the second variable is, well, if you're downshifting your income, do you still need to be saving for retirement? 
or can that downshift in your income just be enough to cover your cash flow? Here's the scenario, meeting with a, a doctor actually later today and very stressful situation that he's in. And, um, and part of it is the medical corporation that he's, uh, it's just some dynamics. And he's like, well, listen, and I get paid really well. However, I would love to be able to switch to a different, uh, a different practice or even drop to three days so I have less stress. And I'll go from making you know, 250,000, I'll go to making 100,000, but I'm okay with that. Well, to me, it's, well, can you guys live your lifestyle uh, on, uh, on 100,000 net after taxes? And in their situ situation, they said, yeah, we can. But does that lower salary still allow you to save up for retirement? Oftentimes it wouldn't. And so you've got to look to say, well, in the, at what time or at this transition point, going from high stress, high pay to low stress, low pay, would you still need to be saving up for retirement or have you saved enough in advance where you can now transition to that lower pay, lower stress job and say, well, but I, at least I don't need to be funding retirement because I've already funded it. And then the third big factor with this is, well, if you could, you know, in that high stress, high paid job, if you thought, well, geez, I could only work until 62 because then I would just be I, like, I, I need to be done as soon as I possibly can. Well, if you transition to something that's lower pay, but lower stress, could you then work an extra year or extra couple of years before you fully retire? To me, that's the dream scenario. This is the dream scenario in, in, in this circumstance. If you are just barely hanging on to this high stress, high pay job and it's just not the lifestyle that you want. Can you find something that's low stress and lower pay, but still offers health insurance and offers enough pay for you to at least cover your monthly bills and annual bills? You've already saved up enough for retirement, would love to prove that. And it allows you to work a little bit longer, even an extra couple years, which delays, your, delays the time at which you would need to dip into your portfolio to start living off of and allows you to delay Social Security as well. That's the ideal scenario, and your CFP should help craft that for you to see if that can work. And then the final implication is with Social Security. And, and so you've got to figure out if you've been, wor if you've been earning enough and maxing out that Social Security wage base, and so you've, you've got maximum Social Security, and, and the Social Security assumptions are based on that, but then you transition to a lower income job and you don't have a full 35 years of work history, it's very possible, very possible that that Social Security, your Social Security will go down slightly based on what you've been planning on. You just need to be aware of that. Work with your CFP, that shouldn't come as a surprise. Just be aware of that. And again, if you update that and adjust that in your five factors and it still works, wonderful, okay? You just don't want it to be a surprise. So what's your retirement goal? How, how do those five factors work for you? And if, you, if you've had the traditional, all right, I'm gonna work until 66 or 67 and so on, but you're feeling this stress and would love to transition earlier to something from high stress to low stress, work with your CFP, build that out. Your financial plan should, should give you that confidence and clarity and the creativity to say, I can, I can take that step or here's what I need to do in order to do that. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can find one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.